my guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant. This is the Long Dark. And I'm stuck out here in this blizzard. With temperatures at minus 44 degrees Celsius and visibility so low, it's difficult to navigate and death could be close. We need to find some place to escape this cold. As the game has no inbuilt compass or map, you have to rely on your own memory of the landscape to find your way about. And it's from that knowledge alone that I was able to find my way back to my cabin. Now the blizzard is set in who knows for how many hours. It's impossible to go back outside again for any length of time and even if I did I probably wouldn't be able to find anything out there. So it's fortunate then that I managed to find a good number of sticks and other wood to burn. That will keep me going for a while in here. And I bashed up these crates as well to reclaim some additional wood. Being trapped in a cabin like this then can pose its own problems both from a gameplay point of view as well as a survival point of view. From gameplay there's not always a whole lot to do. From survival if you're trapped here without any food and without any fuel then it's unlikely that you'll survive for much more than 24 hours. Now I don't know how long these type of blizzards can set in for, whether there's some sort of limit. But after extensive waiting around I decided the best option was to just go to sleep and wait it out. Though the game doesn't feature this and I added this footage in. For those of you that have ever tried sleeping in very cold environments, you will know that sometimes dark dreams can settle in. After that short nap, I woke up to hear the storm still raging on. So I decided to have another sleep and hopefully wait the storm out. And you can hear it blowing itself out. Finally, it's the blizzard's gone. It's much more quiet out there. Well, it's probably still very cold, but the trouble with sleeping so long is that I'm now pretty hungry and pretty thirsty. Fortunately, the cabin has come with a bunch of supplies here. The military grade rations here are some of the best rations and food you can get available in the game and give you a significant amount of calories. I've also got a small stock of water here that I got from melting some snow previously. Now as you can see there's about 4 hours of daylight left and I thought that would be enough time to head on out and try and gather some more resources. Now I don't want to get stuck out there during the night because that could be very cold and extremely dark. But I knew the layout of the local land and I knew that I'd be able to push just a little bit beyond that and maybe discover something new. Now there are 5 maps within the game and they're all connected to each other. You can choose which one you want to start the game in. This one is Mystery Lake and it's probably one of the easiest locations to actually start off in. As yet I haven't actually come to the edges of this region or found any access to the other regions. And all of that helps the game maintain a sense of scale as well as a sense of much needed isolation. As you saw back in the cabin I do have quite a store of wood which means fuel really isn't a problem for the uh, short term so I don't need to be looking for that at the moment. The idea now was head out and try and find some food. I wasn't particularly worried what sort of form that food would take. I perhaps would find it in some abandoned buildings or some other cabins out there or perhaps even I could track down a dead deer and harvest the meat from that. In either event the sun was starting to get low and I knew night time wouldn't be too long away. But hopefully there would still be enough time to actually try and find some food. I could probably survive another 24 hours without starting to succumb to hunger. But I really didn't want to get to that point and I was hoping to try and find some resources away before that. You can see here that the temperatures are actually really good. So I wasn't concerned about getting cold at all. In large part that was due to the fact that I had such warm clothing. This then was a location I hadn't yet seen. So I was curious as to whether there'd be any resources here for me. I thought that maybe I'd be able to get into the tunnel there but the text there pretty much informed me that that was not going to be the case. At any rate a wrecked train would likely mean that there's at least something lying around here hopefully. Now for those of you wondering what's going on here the world has suffered from an immense geomagnetic storm causing this character to get isolated in this Canadian like wilderness. Now we don't know what's happened to the rest of the world but this is meant to be a post apocalyptic survival title so it would seem that things probably don't bode too well for the rest of the world. Unless I've missed something here this train wreck turned out to be a little bit of a lit down but there was one dead body here and a hunting knife there to boot which was quite a nice find along with some matches which are a much needed resource within the game. These things do spawn at random. If you start a new game and come back to the same location, chances are that you won't actually see a dead body here, so you never really know what you're going to find out here. At this point then, you can see it really is starting to get quite dark, and it's here that I really should have turned back. Although the difficulty mode I've got the game set on now, wildlife won't attack me, so 
Although there's wolves about, that's not something I need to concern myself with at the moment. The environment is still very much a problem. It sounded like there was two wolves over there, and indeed that turned out to be the case, and they'd taken down a deer. The wolves saw me and ran off, so that meant that the deer was mine for the harvesting. But the question was though, would there be enough time for me to do that? The sensible option would have been for me to head back to the cabin and then come back here in the morning in the hopes that it hadn't been completely devoured by the wolves. Harvesting takes time and as you can see, as I increase the amount of meat and other resources I want to take from this carcass, the amount of time actually increases up to around about an hour and a half there and I actually had less daylight left than that. In my mind though, the train track was behind me and from there it was relatively short distance to back to my cabin. What I hadn't factored on though was just how dark nighttime would actually be. And this is where another problem come in. You may well be able to see some landscape here, but this is how it looked to me. I didn't realise until I played the footage back on another monitor that my own monitor actually has some very dark settings. So I was essentially in complete pitch black. There was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to navigate back. Even with a match here, all that let up was the floor space in front of me. Knowing that the temperatures really weren't all that low at the moment, I made a very noob mistake. Thinking that I could wait out the night here in my sleeping bag, I settled down for a few hours of sleep. Now, if a cold environment can sometimes invoke rather dark dreams, an absolutely freezing environment can invoke a sleep from which you never return. But I didn't actually see this as a significant problem. I'd actually chosen the game to be on easy mode previously, and that was just to try and get a feel for how things worked. Now I'm on the medium difficulty, so the wildlife around me will now attack. If I come across a wolf or a pack of wolves, then I will probably be in some sort of trouble. And of course, on top of that, I've still got the hazards of the environment to deal with as well. I once again started in Mystery Lake, but this time the game placed me in a totally different location. I wasn't fortunate enough to end up in a cabin, and I had really no idea where I was. Coming across a deer straight away could have been a good opportunity to collect some meat, but I've got no tools on me, so I couldn't harvest it at all. You do begin the game with some basic essentials, but not enough to keep you going for all that long really, so you do very need to quickly get out there and try and find some things. There was a little lookout right nearby, That'll come in handy. where I managed to find a little pry bar here, as well as a bullet. The bullet's obviously no use on its own, and unfortunately there was no food or water here either. So I needed to head on deeper into this area to try and find some sort of shelter. Not too far away, there was a frozen lake. Now this frozen lake does have some little huts on it and they are covered over some fishing holes. The fishing holes are all frozen at the moment, but I'd imagine that you can actually break through them. And if you've got a fishing line, then hopefully you can actually fish. Now I've not got any fishing line and although I've got the crowbar, the lack of fishing tackle actually made me feel it was pretty pointless to spend any time trying to break through those holes. But I was hopeful that these little huts would actually have some resources in. You can see here that they don't have any closable doors on them, so they're not particularly brilliant shelters as this guy right here can probably attest to. But they do have some stocks of resources in them, sometimes paper, sometimes food, and various knickknacks like that. But already I was starting to get pretty cold. Now one thing most of these huts does have is a wood burner. And unfortunately I wasn't quite wise enough to stay here and use that. I actually wanted a shelter where I could sleep inside of. Some sort of location that would actually provide a little bit of its own warmth. Aside from the scrap metal here, which I wasn't sure whether it'd be any use or not, there was some other rather helpful stuff here, including a can of dog food. Probably not the most pleasant stuff to eat, but quite possibly a lot better than nothing. And there was also some paper here which I could use as tinder to start a fire. At the edges of the frozen lake, there was a number of cabins. I had no idea what I'd find in them. I can't feel my hands. But my guy here was starting to get very cold. So I didn't really want to risk much more time out here without first getting to a shelter and warming up a bit. If you stayed cold for too long, hypothermia will set in and then you're in for a world of trouble. Whilst this cabin was nowhere near as good as the one I had previously, it was still somewhere that was away from the cold of outside. So the plan was then to stay in here, warm up, and then move on to see what things I could find. And we'll see just how long I can survive in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome to the Long Dark, a world of beauty. 
where the days are cold and the nights are deadly. Here, in my cabin, I'm trying to survive an apocalyptic world. Unfortunately enough, I've been granted the resources here in this very cabin. A significant amount of resources more than you'd normally start with within this game. But nonetheless, the world outside is a threat.